Welcome to the U Poker Academy. Uh, this lesson is going to talk about playing kings when an ace flops. Now everybody knows this is a tricky situation. Your opponent might have an ace, but you can't be certain. So how are we going to play when an overcard over card flops to our high pair? The goals of this lesson, I'm going to teach you about way ahead, way behind play, when you should use it, when you should not use it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about inducing bluffs, since everybody loves to induce bluffs. This should be a pretty fun lesson. Let's go in and set up the hand. We've got pocket kings. Our opponent has a hand that's unknown. And say the flop comes. Say uh, he raises and we re-raise and he calls. And the flop comes. Ace of hearts, nine of diamonds, five of spades. The first thing to note is this board is dry. There's no draws to speak of, no flush draws, no straight draws. Um, and when we get a dry board like this and the ace comes, we're in a situation called way ahead, way behind. What that means is either we're way ahead or we're way behind, but we're not sure which yet because our opponent could have a number of hands. He could not have an ace. He could have an ace. Um, if he doesn't have an ace, he's drawing to at most a five outer. He could have a, a, a pair and be drawing to a trips or two pair, which is a five outer. He might be drawing to no outs if he's got like queen ten or queen jack. He's got no outs at all. But if he has an ace, we're drawing to a two-outer. So if he has an ace, we're about 10% to win. But if he doesn't have an ace, we're about 90% to win. Um, since no card can come on the turn, that'll significantly impact these uh, values. Even, it doesn't matter what comes on the turn, we're still going to be about 90% to win or 90% to lose. Um, this is called way ahead, way behind. Um, that's a standard poker term. You'll see it used on strategies. You'll see it used uh, on forums and in videos. It's sometimes notated as WA slash WB. It's called way ahead, way behind. Um, the goal in way ahead, way behind play is to maximize your equity against weaker hands and to save money when you're behind. The most common way to do this is by checking as many streets as possible. So when should we use way ahead, way behind play? Well. At low stakes or micro stakes, it's probably not worth getting involved in playing fancy with way ahead, way behind. If you're at a casino and you were to get this flop, you'd want to bet the flop and maybe even bet the turn because your opponents are going to call you with a 9, they're going to call you with a 5, they may call you with less than that. You never know. If your opponents are that kind of loose passive player where they're just going to call, go in and bet out. On the flip side, if your opponents are aggressive, um, and they may check raise you as a bluff, it pays to check. So you kind of want to base it on your opponents, but let's just go for a second and assume your opponents are standard good players. Say you're playing against me, um, and I'm going to be playing 24 tables at once. I'm going to be not really paying attention. I'm just going to play my hand for what it's worth. Okay, so against a player like that, you're going to make the most money by betting this flop because you're going to see bet a lot of hands. He could have pocket queens where he would call you. He could have a nine where he would call your bet on the flop. But you're going to want to bet this flop. Um, when the turn comes, no matter what it comes, whether it comes a six or whether it comes another uh, another five, you're going to want to check the turn um, for two reasons. One, you want to keep the pot small. In case he got an, he's got an ace, you don't want to be um, bluffing into him, building the pot for him. Just check it. But the second reason is to induce a bluff on the river. If it comes a five and you check and then it comes a six on the river and your opponent bets, you know he's either got an ace or he's got complete air. Um, the more often your opponent will bluff here, the better your chances of inducing a bluff and getting away with it. So basically if you're playing against a moderately aggressive opponent or a, an opponent who recognizes that you have to bet here to take the pot down, um, checking the turn to induce the river bluff is a really good play. And against most good players it will be a good play. So the second goal of other than just playing when, uh, way ahead, way behind, uh, our, our second goal should be to decide whether we are way ahead or way behind based on how our opponent plays. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You know, if you if you think checking the flop will get him to reveal something about his hand, say you know he's not paying attention, um, you know he'll check the turn without an ace or bet the turn with an ace nearly 100% of the time, um, and as a lot of micro stakes or low stakes grinders will do. They'll tell you exactly what their hand is on the turn. You can check this flop here and know exactly where you stand. If he doesn't bet the turn um, and it comes something benign like a two, 
you can go in and check the turn as well and fire the river, maybe give them a chance to catch something. Um, if it comes something dangerous like another, uh, I don't know, like a seven of diamonds or an eight of diamonds where you know there's a lot of draws on the board now you might want to bet the turn get him to call with a draw so if you can possibly evaluate your hand to no longer be way ahead way behind where you know whether you're way ahead or way behind that's the second goal of playing kings um, when you've got an overcard flop and this to some extent applies even when you're not on kings with an ace um, but the caveat is say the ace say instead of having kings we've got two queens the problem here is that you may not be way ahead way behind because he might have something like a king like a king jack or a king ten in which case he's got quite a few more outs than you would like like him to have. I mean the king's only got three outs but if he's got something like um, two diamonds so like king ten of diamonds he'll have uh, a possible backdoor flush draw, he'll have a possible backdoor straight draw, and those backdoor outs, they just keep adding up. So if you're in a, in a spot like this, you'd be more likely to bet out um, than check, just to shut the hand down, figure out where you are, um, things like that. So that's a good introduction to playing kings when there's an overcard on the flop. You know, it's a hard spot for everybody, it's a hard spot for me, and I've been playing poker for several years. Um, but by trying to figure out, you know, whether you're way ahead or way behind, and then making plays based on that, um, by by taking that kind of look at the hand instead of just barreling into it or getting passive and checking it down, you'll start to learn how to play better poker. You'll start to make more money on these flops by saving money when you're behind, and making money when you're ahead. Um, Remember, uh, I'm making these videos for free, so all that I ask is that you share or like this video so that I can see that people are, are enjoying them and are getting something out of them. And as always, if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. We're making a couple of them um, a week, maybe every couple of days. So just show us your support with a subscription or a like or share it on your Facebook. Um, I'd really appreciate that. If you've got anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Um, thank you and good luck.